Good morning. Good morning. Let's all, let's all stand.
It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning, isn't it? Sure is. We've come this morning, what we recognize our high school graduates on Graduate Sunday. They'll soon be walking across the stage, receiving their diploma, and moving on with the next chapters of their life. And we pray for them, and we want to take just a moment and recognize their achievement here this morning. But first and foremost, folks, we're here to worship God, Amen. our Heavenly Father. Yes, sir. So we welcome you this morning. Glad that you're able to be here. For those that are joining us by live stream, they join us so faithfully for each and every service. We're glad to have you. Right, amen. Just make yourself at home wherever you're at. Glad that we're able to come to you through the internet, and hopefully it'll be a blessing unto you. My prayer is if you're listening and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I trust today will be your day. You'll make the greatest decision you've ever made, whether you're here or whether you're there, that you would receive Christ in true pardon and forgiveness of your sins. Only He can give you joy. Only He can give you peace. And only He can give you eternal life in the presence of God. Amen. You must go through Him. But we welcome you. Glad you're able to be here. Let me make a few announcements. Uh, as we enter into Memorial Day weekend. Now y'all looking at just an old-fashioned preacher. I know you don't think so this morning. But I really am. And we do remember those that have fallen on the battlefields. Amen. Yes, that help pay for our freedom so that we still enjoy the freedoms that we have today. Amen. And I'm glad that we can come to the Lord's house today and most importantly, recognize there was only one Amen. that could go to an old rugged cross yeah. and pay for our spiritual freedom. And we remember him as well, as well as all of those that fought for our country that we can enjoy the freedoms today. The problem in America today, and me and Tim was talking about it again, I don't know, it seems like that's our conversations anymore half the time. There is no fear of God anymore. Right, right. There is no reverence. There is no fear of God. We're raising up a generation that says you can do whatever. Yeah. Don't offend. Everybody's good. Love everybody. Honey, that is not the word of God. Right. Right. There is sin out there. And sin right. must be preached again. It must be dealt with. There's only one that can forgive sins, and his name is God. And I'm glad this wasn't a weekend just to run to the beach or run to the mountains or run to Carowinds or run here or run yonder or find every excuse in the world how to miss God's house. Amen. This is God's day. And we need to remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. That's what the Bible says. And that needs to be proclaimed across this land. And while everybody's playing, they're not remembering those that gave the ultimate sacrifice that we could be able to play. In America. And then we want to play around with God and run and flip and flop and don't go to his house. And this is just an excuse. Oh, we'll get back another Sunday, preacher. Hey, you may never see another Sunday here on this side of eternity. And you're going to stand before an almighty God one day. You say, preacher, we hear why you're preaching to us. Because maybe you need to hear it because next year you might want to flop out. We need to be reverent to an almighty God. There's nothing wrong with the pleasures of the world in, in, a, in the right aspect. You put God first. Then he'll bless you through the rest of it. Amen, brother. Go ahead. It's the truth. Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother. It's the absolute truth. And until this nation, and until the so-called Christians and church folks really get back to fearing God, and worshiping God like they ought to worship Him, we'll see no revival in this land. Amen. And it will continue to wax worse and worse and worse and worse. Right. And the freedoms you hold so dear today, next year may be gone. Right. You can't get them back when they're gone. You say, would God allow that to happen to this land? Hey, he punished his own people when they didn't do what he told them to do. And if he would punish his own people, I promise you the United States of America don't have a special card with God. You're right. I'll promise you that. <coughs> don't forget the Tuesday morning Bible study, 10 o'clock. Wednesday night, our services moved to Welcome Baptist Church over here at Bannertown. Many of y'all know where it's at. I'll tell you just in case. Go down here, hang a left on 89 at the old derby like you're going towards Westfield. You won't go probably a half a mile 
You probably won't go that far. There's a sign on your right that says, Welcome Baptist Church, turn left. Yeah. So hang a left there. Just follow that road around there a little bit, maybe a mile. Church out there on the right. Welcome Baptist. Brother Chris be preaching. Lord Amen. willing, Amen. service is not called off. It is moved. And wouldn't it be something if the Lord called the church out and raptured us on Wednesday tonight? Amen. And us as believers at Victory Baptist Church met you in the throne and said, where was she tonight? Well, I'm glad you here in heaven, though. <laughs> Preach, you're going to be hard today. Huh? I, I, I believe, I honestly, I know I love you, and I know preachers we're called to love and show the forgiveness of God. But I'm going to tell you something, friends. We're living in a day where it don't need to be pitter-pattered around no more. Amen. It needs to be hammered out because we got a bunch of stiff-necked, hard-hearted people. Amen. Remember the service Wednesday night, June the 8th, our covered dish meal and our gospel singing at, at 5 o'clock down in the Christian Life Center. Come be a part of that. June 15th at 10 is the women's Bible study again. Remember that. Vacation Bible School just around the corner, June 23rd through the 28th. Dinner will be served at 5.30 nightly. That's supper. I don't know who put, you put dinner in there. You ought to know that's supper. <laughs> supper at 5.30 nightly at <laughs> Bible School from 6 to 8. Then I have another announcement. It says the Surrey Baptist Association is having a WMU prayer breakfast on June the 1st at 2019. That is from 9 a.m. until 11 a.m. They'll have a guest speaker. You're to meet here at the church at 8.15 if you would like to carpool. Let Connie Hensley know today if you plan on attending so she can make uh, reservations for you and let them know how many is planning on attending. So you remember that on June the 1st. Also, I have a card here. It says the graduating class of 2019 Millennium Charter Academy. The senior class of Millennium Charter Academy announces its commencement exercises Saturday morning, June the 1st, 2019 at 10 o'clock in the upper school gym. And this is for Brother Daniel Moore. So you're all invited to his graduation if you would like to attend on June the 1st. And then I know Nathan's is, when is it? The seventh. So see, you don't have to try to go to both of them at the same time. You can go to one at one time, one at another time. So anyway, June 1st, June the 7th, so you remember these dates. Any more announcements we need to make? Oh, yes, there is. We need clean milk or water jugs. Gallon size. Be saving those. Gallon size. Clean milk or water jugs. Bring them, if you will. That is for Vacation Bible School. They'll be needing those for Vacation Bible School. Okay, any more announcements? Anywhere? If not, we had prayer time this morning at 930. Tried to call out those that we have on our prayer list. Our more immediate concerns here at the church, certainly the lost at the top. We need to continue to pray for the lost. We can't save them, but we can pray for them. And there's a God that can save them. Buck Lankford, continue to remember him. Christy Holifield with her leg. J.D. and Marla, continue to lift them up. Sharon Thomas, Connie Hensley, Charles Vernon, Clara Barrier, that's Phyllis's sister. Uh, Jimmy and Evie Riggs, Rita Martin, that's Chris's mom. Uh, Marie Key and her family, Samantha Kovac and her grandmother. Marsha Frazier, Early Gilly. Don Fowler scheduled for surgery, as far as I know, May 30th for the pacemaker, remember that. Cheryl Bennett, that's Raven Cook's daughter. Continue to remember her, if you would, as you pray. Uh, our online request out there, we can't name them all, but we just want to let you know we can call them out before God, and God knows. Amen. We try to pray for you as well. And then, of course, Vacation Bible School right around the corner. And I do pray that you will continue as the rest of this service unfolds, that God would receive the praise and the honor and glory. Amen. That nothing would be done that would be contrary to what his will would be here this morning. Any others you want to mention before we pray? Joe, I got this surgery Wednesday morning. Yeah, we will. And I mentioned that Wednesday, uh, this morning at our prayer time, and I told them they can't cut too deep. Ain't a whole lot right there. I mean, just ain't much cushion there. But uh, remember him as you pray still. Number one, the guys that work for me, he's going to have the same thing done for him. They're going to have to stop his heart and get back in rhythm probably either next week or the week after. 
Remember this one. Bertha's going home, I understand. Amen. Remember her and the family. Amen. Anyone else? Brother Joey. Yes, afternoon when I was at the God knows. I do remember Buck and uh, Peggy still. They had some MRI <coughs> tests waiting on some results still. So remember, God's will be done in their lives. Amen. God's grace is sufficient Amen. for whatever it may be. Right. Praise him in the good times. Praise him in the bad times. Right. He's still God. He's God on the mountain, and he's still God in the valley. And everywhere in between, he's still God. Anyone else? I appreciate it. He'll probably help you. I hope, pray that he does. A lot of times our ailments we have isn't coming from that area. It's coming from somewhere else. So... I went to the chiropractor. Of course, now I'm not saying chiropractor's God. They're not. God's God. He's the great physician. Amen. When I went to chiropractor, I was hurting inside my right knee. It started a couple weeks earlier, and I'm like, what in the world's going on? I mean, I know I'm getting older, and I know the aches and the hurts is going to go, so I always go about every two weeks to the chiropractor. And while I was there, I said, Doc, check this knee right here, something. What do you think? And he said, ah, oh, maybe a torn meniscus. Let's do a couple of tests. They had a little test they do to test muscles and whatnot. And he said, uh, it's not torn meniscus. It's in your back. He said, I know where it's at. We'll get it. Adjusted me. Knee quit hurting. So it wasn't my knee. It was coming from my back. So, you know. The Bible says that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. God knows how we're put together. Amen. 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 So anyway, remember some math on this. I always appreciate my brother. Go ahead, Roland. Brother Joe, we got a friend. Well, it's just hard to explain. It's between him and God whether he's saved or not. He's just, he's got all kinds of problems right now. His mom's got lung cancer, not that long to be up. He loves his mom. He's halfway given us an opportunity to come by his house this afternoon. He said, call and see if everything's okay. So just pray. Yeah. We get to see him that we can uh, witness and share God's love with him. Amen. He's a loving person, but, you know, I forgot what they call it. He's got some kind of, you know, disease. They call it young man. But, uh, just pray we can be a witness to him and help him, you know, come on. Amen. Remember this. Appreciate all my preacher brethren. I always do. Thank God for the stand that you take. I know this type, day and time we're living in, uh, you men, hey, you're not loved. I tell you that. I mean, I, you want to be, and I know you want to be, but you ain't because you're an enemy of the devil. I pray for you. I pray the Lord give you boldness as you stand. And don't you? And you stand, and you stand unmovable until God calls you home. It's good to have Brother Danny Moore with us this morning. Danny, would you pray for us and lead us to the throne of God, please? Our Father, in Jesus' precious name, we just want to thank you for this wonderful day you've given us. Yes, we thank you. For allowing us to be in your house yes, today, God, God, with our church family. Yes. We pray, God, you just bless the man of God as he stands to preach in just a little while. God, the door to just touch and anoint and bless, because without yeah. it, God, it'd all be for naught. That's right. God, we pray for every request. We lift up every need, every burden, every heart that's heavy, every situation that's <coughs> in someone's mind this morning. But most of all, we pray the Holy Spirit of God to draw sinners to repent. Yes, Father. In this service today, we'll praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I thank you, Brother Danny. Appreciate the good, humble prayer. If you're able this morning, would you stand and turn in your blue hymnal? Blue Hymnal, page 339.
standing on the promises of God, we'll sing the first, the second, and the fourth verses. 339, Blue Hymnal. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let His praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of standing as we ask our ushers to come forward and receive the morning tithes and offerings. Give back to God what is rightfully his and any offerings that you might want to put in addition to that. Not that he needs anything. Can I say to you, God don't need a thing. But we sure need God's blessings on us. And this is worship. Charlie has the blessing on the tithes and offerings. Amen. You may be seated. moment fellowship greet one another
fathers to take a moment and uh, come up here and tell you about their son's past achievements and what they're planning on doing in the future. We're going to take a moment and do that. So Brother Danny, you come right on and share with us about Daniel, okay? And when he finishes, Guy, you just come on up. And when Guy finishes, Victory Song's going to sing one, okay? Y'all come on. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Uh, first of all, I want to say it's good to be in God's house. And it's good to be amongst God's family, our family. Amen. So we're brothers and sisters in the Lord. If you're saved by God's amazing grace, we're both covered by his blood. But I want to thank God for uh, the family he's given us. Amen. Uh, when Joey asked us to say something, I'll try to make it quick, but it's kind of hard. <laughs> but um, uh, I thought, well, I could say something like, his life has kind of been a wreck from the very beginning. <laughs> and there's a lot of truth to that. Um, when, the day he was born, that morning, you know, my wife, well, she just, you know, how late ladies going into labor and stuff. And just all that night and all that morning. So we went to the doctor's office that morning in Mount Airy. And um, they said, you need to get to Forsyth as quickly as you can and don't waste any time to get there. So 30 minutes later, we sat down in the, in the unit down there at Forsyth for her to deliver. And, uh, but you gotta remember, we were, we were hit, kind of in a hit and run. They hit us from behind and took off down the highway down there at 52 and Haynes Mill Road. But it still didn't take but 30 minutes to get there though. So it tells you how good God's grace was, amen. <laughs> how stupid I was too, so. <laughs> but anyway, we were involved in the hit and run that day, but about four hours later, he was born, amen. Of course, he was already alive nine months before that. Amen. 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 Hello. Amen. 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 And so, um, but no, his life hadn't been a wreck. Satan wants to make it that way. Mm -hmm. I'm just picking on him. Amen. Just taking advantage of the time. But <laughs> Satan wants to make you think that sometimes. Um, but God's blessed him. Uh, we were told early on in life from one of his earliest school teachers, one of his first school teachers, that he seemed to have a knack of, of, of really knowing when somebody else is hurting, when somebody else is in pain. In kindergarten, he would have a habit when one child was sad or discouraged, uh, he had a habit of going up, putting his arm around them, and just say, hey, it'll be okay. It'll be all right. Uh, so I want to say, Daniel, it'll be all right. Yeah. Amen. No matter the wrecks, no matter the troubles, no matter the turmoils you go through, It'll be all right. Amen. I got one verse. It's been a long time since we were riding down 601 one evening, passed by the sign out there in front of Haymore. And this verse right here was on that sign. It comes from Psalm 56.3. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. Amen. No matter, I want to say that no matter what problems, no matter what circumstances that you've come across in life thus far, I want to be able to say to you this morning, welcome to the finish line. But I can't say that. I can't. This is just the beginning. Your pastor has already mentioned there is no fear of God. And I'm afraid that's where we're at because we know scriptures teach us that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Amen. A lot of people want to try to take and change the word of God and change the way of God and change the meaning of God's word in order to get to know God. When all the while you've got to have the fear of God in order to know him. And I'm glad that 
Daniel made that decision Amen. when he was about six or seven years old and asked Amen. the Lord Jesus to save him. Amen. And we had the opportunity to baptize him. Yeah. I think things from here on out are probably a little unsettled. He doesn't know quite just yet what, what direction God wants him to go in. But I want to say that when you reach those times in your life when you're afraid, keep trusting in God. Amen. Keep trusting in God. There's going to come a time when mom and daddy can't be there for you. There's going to come a time when your pastor can't be there for you. But rest assured, he promised us he'd never leave us and never forsake us. Son, I want to congratulate you and say I love you. Yeah, come on. I'm used to looking at the back of y'all's heads rather than the front. <laughs> not a whole lot of difference. Except I see a smile. I see a smile, not shine, right there. So. But uh, Joey told me I had five minutes. I don't know if he meant like regular time five minutes or a preacher's five minutes, so we may be. <laughs> but I try to keep it brief. Um, most of you know Nathan about all his life, and uh, I won't go back to birth. I'll go. I'll start about two, and we'll go. We'll go from there. But uh, he never really talked a whole lot before he was uh, two, and uh, when he got glasses when he was two. He had not shut up since, so, uh, so uh, Renee said to be sure to mention that we're going to take his glasses away every now and then, but, uh, but uh, Joe, Joe told me to uh, come a few words, and uh, I kind of took him literal, and uh, while I've been riding the tractor the last week or so, uh, had a little time to, time to think, and the uh, first word that came to mind was uh, tender-hearted. Um, old people. <laughs> Why I'm gonna cry, but uh, old people, youngins, dogs, and baby calves. Um, and past little bit, we've had a time here at the house of the uh, calves are dying, and uh, Nathan he'll get there in the barn and he'll talk to them and he'll uh, rub on them and he'll say, "Daddy, it just ain't fire." Well, life ain't fire, but, but it's gonna be all right. And, uh, uh, believe it or not, uh, through high school, which he, which he was a real good baseball player when he was a youngin, but uh, he kind of grew out of that. But, uh, <laughs> but he, he is an athlete. He, he ran track one year and he played football for four years. And uh, this year's football team, there was a state runner-up. He got drugged by Tarboro, but that's another story. But, uh, uh, but in in the whole state championship ball game, he won the sportsman sportsmanship award and. I guess that's worth more than than a championship, I guess. Um, but he had to work hard. Um, and, you know, it's good that, you know, I'll get I'll get the school stuff here in a minute, but uh, school's always come kind of easy to him. But, uh, you know, when he when he decided to play football, you know, he's, you know, he, he fills that gown out pretty good. But, uh, you know, he ain't, he ain't really built to built to play football really but he worked hard and uh, when he was a freshman uh, some of the seniors uh, was picking on him about playing football you know they said he needed to be you know playing video games or something else and uh, he told them real quick he said that he was just there to help the GPA of the football team so you know he's you know he's you know he worked hard at it and, you know, he had zero receptions for zero yards over four years, but he had a few tackles and uh, I guess his greatest uh, football moment was over here at the Evil Empire of Mount Airy High School when he <laughs> slung a, uh, 
uh, Division One athlete on the ground, and it made him kind of mad. So I guess that's I guess that's the highlight. So <laughs> but, uh, go Big Red. But uh, uh, I wrote down academics, but I've always called Nathan a nerd. And before you roll your nose up about me calling him a nerd, he wears the nerd hat pretty good, so it don't it don't bother him. Um, he. Uh, He's going to graduate with a 4.45 GPA, and he's going to be 17 in his class. Um, but school's always seemed easy um, because Tanner always said, you know, he could take a book and rub it on his head and go take a test, and he had it. I mean, that's, you know, I guess he gets that from his mama. But uh, um, he's in the National Honor Society and the National Technical Honor Society. Um, he's in the FBLA, and that's the Future Business Leaders of America. And him and his, I don't know what you call her, teammate, partner, whatever you want to call her, they finished third in the state uh, back in March. And they're going to, to nationals in San Antonio at the end of the month. Um, so that's, that's pretty good, I, I guess, if you get to go off from here to do something. But uh, he, uh, he got perfect attendance for 13 years. Uh, so he didn't, I think he might have did, but they say he didn't miss a day of school. But, uh, you know. It's like with everything else, you gotta, you gotta show up and do something. Um, but uh, on that same note, while I was sitting in the, uh, at awards day the other day, uh, the vice president of uh, Insteel sent me a text message and said that that was really impressive and said he, uh, that if he couldn't find a job when he got out of college, to let him know. So he said he had employees he couldn't get to show up for 13 days in a month, much less uh, every day for 13 years. So. So, that like church work. Yeah. <laughs> Since you mentioned that, uh, and uh, I said, the next thing I thought of was a servant's heart. Um, he's, the last two years he's volunteered at uh, Pilot Mountain Elementary School. And the first year he done it, he just done it because we didn't want to let him just lay around and do nothing for part of the day when he didn't have a class. So he started going out there and and this past year he did it because he needed the volunteer hours for the National Honor Society and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, he that's, goes back to the first thing about the, about the youngins. Uh, we'll go somewhere and all these little kids will come running up, Mr. Sheets, Mr. Sheets. And I think they're talking to, uh, to me where I work at a school, but they're talking to him. And, uh, you know, he he tries to help them. And uh, he's when he was like in elementary school and stuff, you know, he had always – the kids that kind of struggled, he always got paired up with them and, and worked with them. And uh, and he's he's an Eagle Scout. Some of y'all, I seen Chris down there swinging the other day, so he's still enjoying the Nathan's Eagle Scout project down here. Uh, but he was the, he was the second youngest. I don't know when he when he came through. He was the second youngest out of Pack 545 to get his Eagle Scout. And he got that when he was 14. So. Um, and he's a Sunday school teacher here, and uh, if you, he does a good job. I don't tell him that a whole lot because I don't want it to go to his head. But he he does he does a good job. Cause I'll be sitting in the sound room some Sunday mornings when he teaches, and I'll slide out to the door, and he uh, he does a pretty good job. And uh, and above, I guess above all else, he's our pastor's bodyguard. So so he's safe and sound so far. But. Um, but uh, I gotta get on with it. But uh, and he's a great brother. Um, he's loved and supported his brother and helped him. And uh, he was his uh, assistant coach there for a while. And for a hot minute one day, he was a uh, he was his head coach there for a minute. But uh, that's another story for another time too. But uh, I'll tell you this real quick, and I'll I'll get on with it. Um, when Tanner was in I don't know what second third grade. Anyways, he's learning his multiplication tables, and uh, and Nathan, being being the nerd that he is, he he learned them quicker than Tanner did. So we'd be going over Tanner's flashcards and stuff, and then finally we got to where we had to send Nathan out of the room because he'd be sitting over there saying, "It's 54, Bubba. <laughs> it's 54." So we'd send him to his room so we couldn't hear him, but then we'd see that little hand coming out the coming out the door going. <laughs> So he's he's always tried to help his brother best he could, but uh, he's, he's, they 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 get along good, and you know they'll fight like cats and dogs every now and then, but it's all right. Uh, that's what you're supposed to do when you're a brother. 
But uh, above all else, above all else, uh, none of that other stuff would even matter um, if you weren't born again. Amen. 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 I remember a uh, revival at Indian Grove Baptist Church, and Jeff Wall was preaching the day he got saved, and uh, I've said it. I've said it before, and I've told him a bunch. Uh, I know we all get saved the same, same amount, but uh, but Nathan got it. Um, he's uh, he's my hero of the faith. Amen. He's uh, Amen. I ain't putting him up nowhere. I mean, because he's, you know, I, I I'm scum, but he's he's a little higher than scum, I think. But uh, he's he's a uh, he's a good young. And uh, he's going, he got accepted to the Honors College at Western Carolina, and he's going to go there and study engineering. And i uh, got one verse, and I'll jump on my soapbox for a minute, then I'll sit down and let Joey wear it out. But uh, Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Yeah. With my two, that's what we've tried to do. Um, I've failed. You know, I ain't never won Daddy of the Year, and I probably, probably won't. Um, if you follow me around long enough, you'll see that that I ain't much, but I've tried to do right by my youngins. And uh, I've had a, a few people to uh, to say, well, my gosh, Colway, that's three and a half hours away. They got drinking down there. You know, eighth mile up the road and they got drinking here. Yeah. Renee can spit out some statistics about where she works at the EMS. You look at all the, the drug overdoses and stuff that goes on right here within a, yeah. within a yards of this church but I got enough confidence in the Lord enough confidence in my young that wherever he goes whatever he does now I ain't saying he won't never go down there and drink a cold beer when he's in college I hope he don't but I got enough confidence in the Lord he's going to tear his little hind end up before daddy can get to him Amen. you know just like just like my preacher he goes and plays golf, but I don't call him up when I know he goes and plays golf. Say, Joey, you didn't drink cold beer at the 19th hole, did you, when y'all got done playing golf? Because I got enough confidence in Pansy Jessica and I got enough confidence in Joey Jessica. And there's enough Jesus Christ living inside of him to know that he's going to do what he's supposed to do. Amen. So when my youngins go out and do whatever it is in the world they do, I got confidence in the Lord Amen. that they're going to do what they're supposed to do. Amen. But I appreciate the concern, and I'm not growling at nobody. Uh, but like Joey says, sometimes I don't think some of you can handle some of that. But uh, but um, I got enough confidence in the Lord knowing that that he'll get him before daddy gets him. Amen. But, uh, but I tell you, I'm still daddy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, but Nathan, I'm proud of you and I love you. And, uh, Amen. and I, I appreciate because y'all were all family. That's right. Amen. Uh, you know, your church family. <laughs> Your church family is uh, sometimes closer than your real family right. because, uh, you know, but I appreciate all the help you've been to him and encouraging and uh, the everything because, uh, you know, it's, uh, I don't really agree with who said it, but, you know, Hillary Clinton said one time it takes a village. You know, I believe it takes a good mom and daddy to start with, but, but you know, it does, it takes, it takes a church family right. to, uh, right. you know, to help, but, uh, but I appreciate it. And also, double knot, we offer you these same tools to be used. God bless y'all. We appreciate both of y'all. We really do. Amen. Our church Amen. continue to pray for y'all in the days and the weeks that lie ahead. Uh, don't you forget your church. We're always here for you. I want you to know that. Amen. When you're away, pursuing college or career or whatever it is, we still love you. And this will still be home to you. I want you to know Amen. that. Victory song, y'all come on sing one for us. And then I am
this morning. I trust that you do. Turn with me to the book of Job. The book of Job. Some people call it job. Some of you might be getting ready to enter out into the world and get a job. But no, this is the book of Job. Chapter number one, Lord willing, I'm going to read the entire chapter. You say, preacher, Lord have mercy, don't you know what time it is? I sure do. I promise you I do, but it is God's time. Amen. Job chapter 1, verse number 1, the Bible says, There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses and a great, very great household so that this man was the greatest, get this, of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted in their houses every one his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Verse 6, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Look out here. And Satan came also. Among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. I'm going to stop right there and put a plug in, and this will preach another time, but i got to say it right here. When God asks Satan a question, Satan will answer God. Amen. He can't just close his mouth and turn his back to it. He does answer unto God Almighty. Amen. And the Bible says this. 
Verse 8, And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Hast not thou made a hedge about him and about his house and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. Let me go ahead and say something right here in case I don't get to it while I got it on my mind. Nothing can come your way, men. Nothing can come your way, church. Nothing can come your way, world, unless God Almighty allows it. Amen. The only way that Satan could attack Job's family and Job, what he had, is because God allowed it. Amen. And the Bible says this, verse 13. There was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing, and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabians fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of God has fallen from heaven, and hath burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them, and I only am escaped am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, I mean, can you imagine all this? I can't. I can't imagine. I'd be ready to buckle. And the Bible says, while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. What would we do? What would we do? Listen to what Job did. Verse 20, then Job arose and rent his mantle, shaved his head, fell down upon the ground, and worshipped. And said, naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. In all this, Here's the key to this chapter. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. We could preach that last verse, a two-point message. Job didn't sin in the trouble, and neither did he try to hold God responsible for it either. But that's not the sermon to today. I had a thought upon my heart as we come and we recognize graduates here on Graduate Sunday. And I thought of the words integrity, character, courage, honor, reverence. Those are things that are missing today in many a young folks. And before we as grown adults begin to start pointing our fingers at the young adults, I would say it's missing in a lot of us too. A lot of us have got too deep for our britches, as my mama used to tell me. And believe you me, mama said, when you get too big for your britches, I'd still fit you right back in. Hello? There is no fear anymore. There is no reverence anymore. Now I want to talk to you this morning briefly. I know I took a lot of time reading the scripture and the message will be fairly simple. I've got four points I want to bring out right here today. But I want you to understand, we're looking at a man right here. The Bible says that he was perfect and he was upright. In the eyes of the Lord, he is stewed evil. In other words, he stayed away from evil. 
And perfect and upright does not mean that he was a perfect man. What it means is he strived to follow God. And he had enough sense when he made a boo-boo that he would get on his knees and ask God to forgive him. As your daddies have already stood up here and told you, and they can tell you from experience, they're not just saying it, life is not going to be a bed of roses. Right. It's going to be faced with a many a challenges right. as you go through it. Oh, there'll be plenty of blessings, I pray, as you go through it. But as you go through life, I promise you, there's going to be a ton and a ton and a ton of challenges that'll happen to you. Yeah. I see right here in these first few verses, as we read in chapter 1, about verse 1 through verse number 5, I see a time of calmness. That's point number one. I see a time of calmness in Brother Job's life. He's blessed. He's doing good. He's staying away from evil. He's got a wonderful family. He's got crops. He's got herds. He's got it all. Life seems to be just honey dripping on him. I'm preaching today not just to these graduates. We all need to listen to this. Internet, me too. There's times of prosperity. There's times of fruitfulness in your life. There's times when things are wonderful. And in those times, you better take a moment and thank God and praise Him because tomorrow may not be that way. We see a calmness in Job's life right here. And guess what? When things are good and things are wonderful in your life, I'm speaking to you, child of God. That's when Satan is going to make his move on you. You listen to me and you listen to me good. I promise you, I can tell you from experience. And those are the times you need to draw all near to God. Amen. And you need to crawl to the throne. That's exactly what I said. And I meant to say it. You better crawl to the throne. And you better get just as close to God as you can get. Now, first of all, not first of all, but I want to put this in there. It's amazing to me, Johnny. Job must have lived a pretty clean, good life, Sandra. Because there was a time when the sons of God came and Satan came also. And what did the Lord say unto Satan? Hast thou considered my servant Job? I wonder, now let's look at each other today individually. I wonder if God above could look at me and say, Satan, hast thou considered my servant Joey? Or do I even rank up there close enough to even get attention from him? You say, what are you talking, preacher? What I'm saying is there's a many of Christians today that don't do nothing for God, really don't live their life like they all live it to them. They profess one thing at church and live like the devil, I'm a gene, through the rest of the week. And the devil, he don't need to worry about whipping them kind of people. He doesn't got them whipped, Danny. And I promise you, the devil, I mean, the Lord is never going to say, have you considered this servant? If this servant, I ain't truly a servant. Now here's something else. As you live close to God, if that ever comes your way and he asks, would you consider that servant, you be ready because the calmness will turn. I remember a preacher told me one time, Brother Chris, and I'm going to share this with you. I know I've already showed it, shared it with John and Tim. Preacher told me one time, he said, Brother, said, I'm going to tell you something. He says, you just started preaching. You on fire. You ready to charge hell with a squirt gun. Now I was. And guess what? At 50 years old, I'm still charging a little bit every now and then. But I was. I'd have fought him tooth and nail, and I still try with what the strength the Lord gives me. But this old preacher told me, he said, God's all over you right now. He's just real close to you. But he said, I'm going to tell you something as you continue in your ministry. There's going to be times in your ministry you're going to think, where is God? He seems so far away. He said, you'll get burdened, you'll get troubled. You'll get backstabbed. You'll get knocked down. You'll get everything else in the world by so-called godly people. And you'll begin to wonder if your calling was really real. And if God still loved you and his hand was still on you. He said, I promise you, preacher, just hang on during those times. God's still there. God's still there. If I could tell you graduates something your daddy's already told you, no matter what you face in life, you don't have to be afraid. God's still there. You will be afraid at times. It's an emotion. I've been afraid. You ever been afraid? Amen. Hello, and I'm still getting afraid some things. But I'm telling you one thing. Even though in the midst of my fear, I still got a God I can call out to. And he's always there. And yes, he caresses me and he calms my fears. 
The reason many people don't get their fears calm no more is because they don't have a right relationship with God. That's right. Amen. Are you, are, are you of your father God or are you of your father the devil? Which is it? There was a calmness there. Then finally, well not finally, but next in verses 6 through verse 12, Job's called out. What a privilege in a way to get called out. Nobody likes to get called out no more, do they? You know what would happen in most churches day if the preacher went to calling out the congregation by name? Uh, be gone. Be gone. Now, I don't do that. I don't. I don't call you by name out unless I'm using you for an illustration. You sit up here on the front pew, you ask for it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, you volunteered for it. You don't fall. <laughs> Betty sat up here one week. She couldn't handle it. She had to get back to the back. <laughs> she said she couldn't hear me, but after that first Sunday she came up here, I ain't never heard her say that again. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm using it as an illustration. I hope you understand. But you know what's wrong in today? Today there's no more accountability. Right. We want to recognize accomplishments. Yeah. Hello? Everybody gets a trophy. Uh -oh. Everybody wins. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Let's talk about the good in life. But let's don't call the sin, sin. Let's don't talk about where the weaknesses are. Let's don't talk where the mistakes are no more. Amen. And if we do that, we have no need of God yeah. in our lives. At this time, Job was called out. And I promise you, it wasn't a pleasant calling neither. When God allowed Satan to go after Job's substance and what he had, now, I want you to notice this. A lot of people think it happened right then. My Bible don't say that. My Bible don't say that. It says there came a day. It don't say the next day. Listen. We've got too many Christians today that's got so relaxed and so comfortable. Life is good. I've got a good job. I'm making good money. I've got good help. I've got cars. I've got boats. I've got golf carts. I've got vacation rentals. I've got this. I've got that. And if I ain't got it, if I want it, with all means, I can go get it. And if I ain't quite got the money, maybe my credit's good enough, I can go borrow for it. Hello, I'm just preaching today. That's the way we are. That's exactly the way we are. And you know what? When we start doing those things, those are the times when maybe we're not so perfect and we're not so upright in the eyes of God anymore. We were at one time, but maybe those things of the world has pulled us away from God a little bit. And let me tell you, friends, that's the day. That's the day when the devil's going to show up. And all of a sudden, Job's blessed with all this all this around him. Because I want you to notice something. There in those first few verses, as his sons and daughters were feasting, Job did the right thing. He offered sacrifice. You know what that means? Parents praying for their young ones. Yeah. I want to ask you something, parents. Don't raise your hand. When's the last time you really did pray for your young ones? Oh, that gets quiet. We say pray for my youngins. When's the last time you really got down on your knees and wept before an almighty God? I mean, when's the last time you really got down before God and said, God, I'm the biggest old mess you know I am. You see me for what I really am. And I beg and I plead with you first of all to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me and straighten me out. Help me to live my life the way I ought to live it. Now I beg on you and plead for behalf of my Youngins. Mm. It's quiet when you preach like that. Then I find there in verses 13 through 19, there's calamity. Boy, I just, I told you, I can't imagine what all would happen right here. I mean, can you imagine? I'm going to preach a little while. If y'all get hungry, don't worry. They got some food for you after a while. And something else I won't tell y'all. I appreciate y'all not running down there and trying to cook it while the worship service Amen. is going on. Amen. We can wait a little while. Amen. This is more important. Yes, it is. 
Yeah. Hell, you too rough, preacher. I know, Lord, have mercy. Truth's truth. God never called me to tickle your ears. Right. He called me to tell you the truth. Right. There's calamity. I cannot imagine all of this happening. <coughs> Think about it. Here goes the oxen. Here goes the servants. Here goes the asses. Here goes the, the servants there. Here goes the sheep. Here goes it all. And one right after the other. I mean, I can almost see them before this servant finishes telling Job the next one's in line. Can't you imagine Job is saying, I'm getting tired of hearing bad news. And he sees that next servant coming over the hill and he's like, oh Lord, what's next? I can't stand no more. I'm telling you, this is the way life can be. It's not always going to be easy. It's a wonderful time. You live your lives for the Lord and you do the best you can. You always honor him. You always serve him. But you remember, as you are a child of God and as you represent our Heavenly Father and his kingdom, not just them but all of us, you remember something. Satan hates you. My dad said when he was called to preach, said at his ordination service, the preacher that was preaching the charge says, Brother says, You're living in a glass house. I've always heard that and I agree with that. But guess what that preacher told him? Says, You're living in a ga- glass house and everybody's throwing rocks at it. Yeah. Why? Because the devil hates you. What your daddy said is Nathan's right. There's liberalism, there's drinking, there's wilders partying. It ain't just in Western Carolina, it's everywhere. Hey, go, let, let me go ahead and help you. It's at Easter High School. Amen. It's at Mount Air High School. Amen. It's at Pilot Mountain Middle School. Amen. It's at Pilot Mountain Elementary School and all the others around. It's there. It's in so called Christian schools. Amen. You say it ain't preacher. I remind you, there is none that doeth good and sinneth not other than one. That's Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. I know what's inside of man. The Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? We inherited a sinful nature from Adam. And it's not, you don't have to be taught to sin. It's natural for man and woman and boy and girl to sin. What I'm saying is this. You cannot shield your youngins from the world forever. There's going to come a time they got to get out and leave the nest and do their thing. You try to put their trust, you've raised them the best you can. Yes, you parents, you're going to continue to offer advice. You're going to do whatever you could. If your young and called you and said, I'm broke down on the side of the road, got a flat tire, and need your help, you go. But let me tell you something. Don't you go over there and, and, and walk every step of it waiting for the tire to go flat either. Huh? You've taught them to trust in God. Now let them prove that they'll trust in God. I like what Guy had to say. He said, I got enough confidence in my God, he'll get a whole time if he drinks a beer. Amen. And he said, when he gets a whole time, then I'll get a whole time. Now, guys at an age ain't a whole lot he can do. I don't care what you think, brother. I'm telling you the truth. He's grown. Y'all help me and we'll get on some. <laughs> but I ain't going to quit till God says quit. Amen. You may think you daddy and I'm still my youngin's daddy, but let me tell you something. There comes a time, Caleb, we've instructed them, we've done for them, we've done what we can. Yeah. Brock's a pretty good old boy, and I tell him, I say, you know who boss still is, don't you? But I don't know if y'all have looked at him lately. I believe if he threw a punch at me, he might get me. (laughs) Just telling it like it is. Yes, I am too. I am too. At least I want to think I am. (laughs) But what I'm saying is this. As godly parents, we've tried to raise our children in the nurture and in the admonition of the Lord. That's what God commanded us to do. He says that when they're old, they'll not depart from it. Hey, listen to me, parents. You can't raise them when they're 20. Too late. You can't start when they're 15. Too late. You can't wait till they're 10. Too late. I'm going to preach this morning. Here we have Sunday school. Every single Sunday morning, 
and some of our smallest <coughs> classes, you ought to be having these young ones right in them classes. For y'all to have And not only have men there, you get in there too. There's a class for you. I promise you it's too late when they get too old, you'll never raise them. A lot of what I've learned in life from my parents was taught to me at an early age. Integrity, honor, courage, don't lie. Yes, ma'am, no, man. Yes, sir, no, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Those things were taught to me at a young age. And now you run into kids today and you can say thank you. And they say, yeah. <laughs> What's wrong? What's wrong in this generation? Need an old hickory tea tied to the rear end. If I had to answer somebody like that as a young person, if they'd have said, thank you, young man, and I said, yeah, whatever, or, or, or cool deal, <laughs> or whatever, I promise you, if my mom and dad had been standing around before I'd have got the words out of my mouth, my teeth would have got mashed in the back of my throat. <laughs> but here it is, it's calamity. There's going to be tough times in life. Everybody here could amen that. Amen. You say, well, I ain't had none, preacher. Well, I'm praying for you because you'll probably start tomorrow. Yeah. Calamity. Final point to this message is found in the last two verses. Actually, the very last part of verse 21. The Lord gave and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Graduates, don't you never forget that no matter what comes your way, you still bless the Lord. Amen. You still put him first. If he takes something away from you, he can give you something much greater. Yeah. But he wants you to brag on him. Amen. He wants you to praise him. He wants you to trust him. And then this last verse, verse 22, it says, In all this Job sinned not, nor charged I'm a word person. It don't say changed God because can't nobody here change God. Amen. It says nor charged God foolishly. What's all that mean, preacher? <coughs> it showed confidence in the God that he served. Right. It showed cleansing from the God above that he served. Amen. See, it's all started out great in chapter, in chapter 1, verse 1. He's blessed. The Bible says, Brother Roland, he's the greatest man in the East. And here in the last verse of this chapter, Marty, here he is with sackcloth and ashes on his knees and on the ground begging an almighty God to cleanse him. He'd been playing for his youngins. Hello, I'm giving you the Bible. Now he's praying for himself. Listen. Come on, Lord, get the invitation ready. I want to ask you something today. When's the last time you got cleansed? You say, well, we're here to recognize these graduates today. We want them to do great things in life, and we do. And I want you to know as your pastor, I'm here for you, both of you, and you others. If I can offer you advice, if I can offer you counsel, I will. I will. I'll do what I can for you spiritually speaking, but you're going to have to live your lives. And while I'm not watching and your parents are not watching and the church is not watching, there's a God above watching. Amen. And we're not going to judge you, but he is one day. You remember that? Here's Job cleansed. And listen to this, confident. You say, hey, you know he was confident, preacher. Because the Bible said he did not charge God foolishly. And I'm going to take just a minute to get this in. We're going to have the invitation. I have seen it in my ministry. And if I continue to be in ministry and God blesses me with help, I'll probably see it some more, Brother Luke. I have run into situations where calamities would happen in people's homes, maybe death or whatever, unforeseen, uh, fire, house fires, whatever, and they'll get mad at God. Amen. Let me tell you something. That's the worst thing you do. Amen. That's the worst thing you do. I've had people tell me, I'm mad at God, I just can't go to church no more. Mm -hmm. Well, where are you going to go? Yes. Living below in this old city.
sinful world. Hardly a comfort can afford. Striving alone to face temptation so listen. Where could I go but Maybe. to the Lord? Job recognized where he needed to go. Yeah. Now I'm telling you, you know, I'm giving you some joeology here, but I believe you've seen a brief overview of that's everything that happened from good, great, to calamity, to mess. You'll spend the rest of the books of Job with a heated conversation between him and his so-called friends. Yeah, yeah. That's right. You've got an overview right there of what happened in his life. But I'm reminded that he didn't charge God and he didn't blame God. Worst thing anybody in this church could do or listening to me by the internet is this. Worst thing you could do is blame God for your mess. God said that Jesus came, listen, I'm giving you the word, that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. You know why you don't have it abundantly? Because you rebelled against God. Simple. Let's stand. If you're hearing your laws, you need to come to Jesus. You need to come be saved. Christian, if you hear things ain't right in your life, some of you have been graduated from school a long time. And you've seen all kinds of messes, and guess what? Some of you's in worse shape now than you was. Hello, I'm just preaching it. Some of you's in the worst shape financially, the worst shape mentally and spiritually than you were when you was in high school because you've got out and played with the devil in the world, and if you're God's child, he ain't going to have no part of that. He'll just let you get whip, 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 whip. I want to ask you a question. When are you going to get tired of the whippings and come back to Calvary? Amen. When are you going to get tired of the messes and come back to the abundant life? Amen. Invitation, George, wash your place. Right there's the problem. I've just preached you from the power of the throne room of God, I know. And people will stand right here and say, God, I'm good. God, I'm good. Well, let me tell you something. When your calamity befalls you this week, you call me and I'll pray for you, but don't expect me to come fix it for you. There's one here today that wants to hear from you that can fix it. I can't. I can't. That hot dog down there in a minute, it might fix your growling belly, but it ain't going to fix your spiritual condition. Right now. Listen, the God of all gods, the King of all kings is giving you an invitation and says, come speak to me personally right now. Come speak to me. Come talk to me about it. You come boldly to the throne room of God. He allows
places. Do I have a motion at this time? We receive them, members of the church. I have a motion. I have a motion. Do we have a second? All favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion is carried. Amen. Amen. And I believe the invitation is sufficient. Amen. You had an opportunity to do whatever God asked you to do. Not what I asked you to do, what God asked you to do. Fire benediction. Come here, young man. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, that just makes me think. You know. I remember, I can remember my high school graduate Sunday. I was at Jessup Road Baptist Church. Brother Paul Key was the high school there. And I remember him handing me that Bible just like it was last Sunday. You know what? Ain't a whole lot of water going over the dam since then. That's over 30 years ago. Wonder what I'll do with the next 30 if we allow them to live. <coughs> you know what? That seemed like last Sunday. Yeah. We need to do all we can do for the Lord. Yeah. You know, be serious about living our life. The best we'll do is make a mess. Right. But be serious about living for Him because this thing has eternal consequences. So the choices we make has eternal consequences. So, Barbara Benediction, I want you to come by, shake these young men's hands, congratulate them, encourage them, and I want you to give Luke and Mary Ruth the right hand fellowship and welcome them into our church. All right, anybody got a word for the Lord? Thank God to be here. Amen. 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 You know, you're talking about well, it's been a great great Sunday. Yesterday in mail, I got my 50th year class reunion. But <laughs> 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 50 years. Yeah. But you know, it's just not changed that much. The scenery has changed. Yeah. I have gotten old. I don't have quite as much hair as I used to. Uh -huh. A little more belly than what I used to. But the times <coughs> haven't changed that much. They're still the drink. No. They're still the party. Oh, yeah. They're still the drugs. They're still the sex. It's still out there. What has to change is your heart. What do you want? Do you want it? Or do you want not? Stay with God. Amen. Amen. You can't go wrong. Right. Well, it's been good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. Amen. Those like I said, preachers, you went too long today. You better pray and ask for forgiveness of the Lord. Preacher, be quiet. <laughs> God bless you. Come back, shake your hand, make your way down the street tonight.